In this video, I'm gonna be showing you some proven ways that you can start attracting your target audience to you so you don't have to go out like a crazy person trying to hunt them down all the time. Oh, it's you, I found you. So, let's get straight into it. So the first thing that you need to do if you haven't already is to create a customer avatar. Now, if you haven't already got a customer avatar for your business, I'm gonna to link to another video up here somewhere that's going to walk you through how to create a customer persona, a buyer persona, whatever you wanna call it for your business. But assuming you do already have a ideal customer or a buyer persona in mind, the most important thing you need to do to start attracting potential buyers to you is to intimately understand the problems that your customers have before they even know they need your product or service. When most businesses put out content, they put out content that's to do with how their product helps, but most people don't even wanna hear that at this stage because they're so consumed by the problems and challenges that they're facing day by day. They don't care about your product, your service, they just care about themselves at this stage. Now, the more narrow you can make this, the better. To give you an example of this, when I first started our blog, I was creating content along the lines of how to launch a new Facebook ads campaign or how to run Facebook ads with a small budget. But the issue I then realized is that blog was attracting us customers, but it was attracting us the wrong kind of customers because I was using words like how to run Facebook ads with a small budget. We were getting people in who wanted help, but they couldn't afford to pay us. So so you really want to get very, very clear and specific and think about what kind of things your customers might actually be searching for. One of the shifts I then made was into creating content around things that more established businesses might be searching for. So things like how to scale Facebook ads without affecting cost per acquisition, or should I use horizontal or vertical scaling? So things that indicate that somebody is at that level where they're looking to scale or they're already running ads and they're just looking to take things to the next level. So really think about how this might look for your customers, for the ideal buyer or the ideal customer persona that you have in mind. The next thing that's really important to do as well is to understand the language that your customers use. I had no idea what she was saying but I knew what she was saying. Now, when I say language, what I really mean is the kind of terminology that your ideal customers would be using. For example, I've created a number of different blogs and videos all around this idea of creating a buyer persona. And I've given the blogs different titles, things like how to create an ICP, an ideal customer profile, which I know is more commonly used in the SaaS space, for example. A lot of people will refer to it as an ICP. Whereas for other companies, they might be searching for things like buyer persona, which is maybe more commonly used. So when you understand your particular audience and the kind of terminology they might be using, it allows you to put out content that is going to resonate with them. It's going to grab their attention because you're speaking to them on their level. So try to get out of how you might talk about something internally and really get into the mind of your customers and how they speak speak about things, the kind of language patterns or the terminology that they might actually be using. Now this next point is absolutely critical and it's probably one of the most important parts out of all of this and that's to not sell in the content or the marketing that you are putting out there. Instead of that, you want to focus on giving, giving value, giving information, helping your customers to achieve the goal that they have or solve a problem that they have. Because here's the simple fact, people do not want to see ads, they don't want to see marketing. What they want to do is consume content, they want to be entertained, they want to be educated, they want to solve the problems that they have, and they want to make their life that little bit easier. This is exactly what we do when we're running ads for clients. We're asking ourselves, who is this customer? Who is the buyer persona here? And what kind of things would they actually want to consume and want to watch if they were scrolling through their feed? So it doesn't even feel like an ad when they see it. It just looks like a bit of content that they would naturally be interested in because it aligns with the problems that they are facing 
day to day. So really think about how this is going to look for your ideal customers. For example, if you're a dentist, nobody wants to see why you need to come to the dentist three times a year or why you need to brush your teeth. They might be interested in things like how to get that smile you've always wanted, how to create a great first impression when you walk in the room, or how to solve that tooth pain, or why do you have tooth pain? So you're educating people, you're entertaining them, you're giving them content that they actually want to see and consume, not things that are just trying to sell your products or services. The goal here when you're creating content to try and attract your target audience isn't to try to be a company or somebody that people want to buy from you want to try and become a company that people want to follow because they get so much value from you when you can have that perspective on the content you're creating you will find you start attracting more of your ideal customers than ever before because the intent behind that content has changed now you might be thinking to yourself but I need sales, I need to generate customers. And if you trust in this process and do this consistently, you won't have to worry about that because the customers will come naturally because of the value that you are creating in the market, which builds massive trust, massive credibility, and people will start inquiring. This also creates a ripple effect as well. We've even had customers that have come to us who have been referred from somebody who's never even been a customer before They've been referred from people who have just simply seen or consumed our content, but maybe they weren't at a stage where they were ready to buy, but they've gone and told a connection or a friend or a family member about us because they were so impressed with the value that they received. So when you make this shift, so many new doors will open up to you and you will start attracting your customers, your ideal customers, your ideal buyers like never before. Now the next thing you want to do to really start tying this all together is to become obsessive with testing different messaging, different hooks, to see what resonates most with your target audience and then using those insights to create better and better content over time, which is going to attract more and more of your ideal customers to you. To give you an example of this, this might look like using the same video but changing the headline on it, the hook you have in that video to pull people in and see what gets the best engagement. That's then going to give you an idea of that really core message, that core pain, that core hook that is resonating with people. You can yet then use that insight to make more content like that in future, which again is gonna bring more customers to you. The final thing that I'll end on here is to make sure that you're creating content on the platform where your customers are spending most of their time. There's no point being on every single social media platform out there if your customers aren't using them. So figure out for your buyer persona, where are they spending the most of their time? Where are they hanging out most online? And create content there. It's also worth bearing in mind that types of content you'll want to create for different platforms. For example, people on TikTok or maybe Instagram Reels, it's going to be much shorter form, digestible, bite-sized content, which needs to be very, very high energy and engaging for people because otherwise they're simply going to scroll past it. If however you're doing things like YouTube, YouTube is generally something people go on to for finding information like this video where you can make longer form, more in-depth and educational content. So you really want to make sure that the style of content you're putting out is relevant to the platform and the medium that you're actually putting it on. The truth is though, most people will use a variety of different platforms for different purposes. For example, they might use things like YouTube, like this video, for finding information or answering a particular question. And in that case, it might be better suited for more informational, educational style content. For things like, you know, TikTok and Instagram Reels, people generally just want a little dopamine hit, right? They want a bit of entertainment. Maybe they want some information, but it needs to be packaged in an entertaining way and a bite-sized form that's digestible and easy for them to consume. So it's really important that you bear in mind the platform and the medium that you're putting content out there on when you're trying to attract your ideal customers. So there you have it guys, if you start consistently implementing all of these points into your business, into your content and marketing strategy, you will begin to attract 
more of your ideal customers to you. I'm gonna be linking to another video after this one, which goes into some of the critical mistakes people make when creating their buyer persona or trying to find their buyer persona online and how you can really drill down who this is to make your chances of attracting them significantly higher. I'll see you there.